Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am back with a different kind of video, something a little bit different from my usual, but because I feature a lot of travel on my channel and on my blog, I thought that I'd probably share this with you because you might be interested. Um, as you may already know, I am traveling to Croatia and Montenegro this week. Probably by the time that you see this video, I will already be there. I will be on the boat, which is so exciting. Um, but I'm going to take you through my packing routine because I feel like perhaps it might be helpful to some people and um, I've done a fair amount of traveling so I've learned a little few tips and tricks along the way. Um, so I'm just going to climb into it and hopefully you find this helpful. So to start off with I've got my empty suitcase over here. Um, this is quite a small suitcase. I don't travel with a full size luggage bag. I just don't like it because I like to be able to maneuver my luggage myself rather than rely on somebody else to. And I usually do multiple destinations in one go. So I'm generally on the move as long as I'm staying in a hotel for two weeks. Um, I like to see as much as I possibly can when I do travel. So the smaller variety of suitcase is the best for me, I just find. And I also find that that means that you don't have to overpack because you don't feel like you need to fill the entire suitcase because it is already smaller so it's limiting you on how much you can pack anyway and I also like this because it means that in no way shape or form am I ever going to be over the weight limits for the flight which is great because I know when I get to the Air Force even without having put my suitcase on a scale that my luggage will be under the weight limits and I won't need to fork out extra costs for having extra weights in your bag and I think there's probably nothing worse than doing that on your way out of the country because you know you, when you're out of the country you're going to do shopping and buy mementos or whatever else you're doing so the chances are that coming back into the country your bag's going to be heavier so I think that would be absolutely terrible if you arrived when you were leaving the country with an overweight luggage bag so this way I just find that one stress out of the traveling scenario is eliminated. So to start off with, um, because I'm going to be doing a beach holiday, I have a float, a donut float already laid in my bag. I've taken it out the box. And then I have another one as well. I've got one of those giant swan um, floats and it's going to take a lot of space. I'm going to drop this in first um, and then we can work around it. So in that goes, then I'm going to be taking whatever items can fit down the side of that. I'm going to be taking these pajama tops. Um, they're just a whole bunch of t-shirts really, but really, really soft ones that I love to sleep in. And I folded them up really, really small, as you can see. They probably, I don't know, if they went in your cupboard, they'd probably be about that big, maybe, maybe a bit bigger. But um, I folded up small, and I'm gonna pop those on the side. So there we are not wasting any space whatsoever. A trick that I think is probably very, very useful is that I use tissue paper to wrap my clothes in to avoid creasing. So I have a top here that I haven't yet folded that I thought I would show you. It's already creased, so it probably needs to be ironed before I pack it finally. But um, here I'm going to be showing you the technique that I use with tissue paper. So I just take one, one sheet of tissue paper and I will fold my shirts or top or dress or whatever it be into the tissue paper just like they do at Pretty. Um So once I have done that, I'll fold any excess tissue into the shirt and then I will fold it up again. So you'll end up with something like this. And this way, you don't have to worry about whether there's an iron or a steamer in your hotel room when you get to the other side because the creasing will have not been an issue. So I'm first going to pop these bikini pants into my bag because these ones are one of those triangle bikinis that cannot be folded because they're made of that scuba material. Kind of annoying. Um, but anyway, I'm going to put that in there so that they are flat. And then... I'm going to take all of my swimwear, 
I've got six items here that I'm just going to drop in. Um, I like to keep all of them together so that when I get there, um, they are all together. And if I unpack in a hurry, I can just pack things immediately into the cupboards um, the way I would have done at home because I don't need to fish and see, oh, okay, here's one bikini, there's another bikini bottom, or whatever it be. So this way I know where they all are together. And if I get there and we immediately go out into the water, I can just open my bag and I know exactly where they are. So, next I'm going to be taking these items I've already folded and I've folded in the tissue paper. So I'm going to pop this one that I've just folded on top of this pile. And I've got a maxi dress that I've done exactly the same thing with. I have got a off-the-shoulder white dress, or I've just pulled my pile apart. So I've got... A pump pump dress, this is by Brett Robson, if you are interested in purchasing it, I will leave a link down below. But now I'm going to fold this in half, so it's really small, and I'm going to pop that in. So I think we'll pop that at the side. Then I'm going to take this blue top that I fold, and I'm going to pop that in over there. Then I've got another off the shoulder top, this one is crochet, so it doesn't need the tissue paper. So just be wary of which kinds of fabric that you are using. This is an off the shoulder maxi dress. So I've folded that in tissue paper and I'm going to, this you would even be able to fold this way so you get a smaller surface area and pop that in too. So now I have a couple shorts. Oh, I've got this lovely white pile here. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but um, all the whites ended up together. So I've got another white summer's dress, also folded in tissue paper, and I'm going to pop that over there. And then we are going to a, a hot destination, but you always need a pair of jeans, I find. I think it's important to make sure that you always have something that you can throw on to be a little bit warmer in case the wind is blowing or you end up with a rainy day of some sort. So I've got a white pair and I've got a dark wash pair as well. So I'm going to throw those in. These you can really fold up quite small. And I'm going to wedge those in a little space there. I'm going to do the same with white ones. I have muesli. I normally buy the end of portion servings. I think they're called, you know, they come on the strip and they're just little bags of muesli. And I'll pop those in and then I'll cut them up and stick them in my bag every day. When I go out, I'll just stick one or two bags of those into my bag because then as I'm walking around and I start to get hungry but I haven't yet found a place to eat, um, I can just snack on my muesli and I'm quite happy to do that until I get to a place where I can have lunch or dinner or whatever. So when I travel, I generally end up packing one or two hats because I just love hats. So um, I normally pack a fluffy wool hat or a felt hat um, and this time I'm not going to be doing so mainly because I left my favorite one in a hotel room in San Francisco but um, I'm going to be packing this one because it is foldable um, I just did that without even being conscious of it but yeah it's one of those really cute beach hats so um, they're quite popular at the moment but this one's not stuck which suits me just fine because I can fold it up real small and just wedge it in. The next handy tip that I have is to keep all your shoe bags. So I have this one, this one's from Tory Burch. Um, I've got another one here that's from Ted Baker. Um, so they just have little drawstrings on the side here. So whenever you buy shoes, just make sure you don't throw away the shoe bag because they're really handy. So I've got my little sandals. I've just popped them in here, um, pull the, the string and there they are, all nice and neat. You don't have to worry about where the shoes are and whether they're dirty in your clothes because you wouldn't want that. So that you can pop at the top there. Then I have my sunglasses. So I'll be taking three, perhaps four pairs of sunglasses. Um, always keep your glasses case um, because they are really, really handy and they're so protective over your glasses. So I've got those here. I still need to find a bag for these ones unless I just pop them in my hand luggage which I probably will end up doing because I don't think I have a hard case for these ones 
Um, so those you can just pop in together. Somewhere that's a little bit protected in your bag. So that's it for the big luggage. I will show you how I pack my cosmetics and what items I pack in my cosmetics bag as well because that will be going in here and then I'll have a very small one going in my hand luggage as well. So let's do that next. I have my shower items. I have tried to go for as small as possible. This is a small shampoo but I've ended up with a big shower gel so don't mind that. But I've also got three different SPFs which I think is very very important and then rather than having a huge moisturizer I've packed a small uh, body oil to keep moisturized in the sun so I'm just going to pop these into this bag quickly and I'll pop that in my suitcase I've got my skincare products in here as well a huge tip that I think is well worth using is to make sure that if you are using a particular brand or skincare range the next time that you go to pick up the products um, see if they have any sample products uh, available in the particular range that you use because then you can just get a small little bag sometimes or actually quite often they'll give you a little gift bag with your products and then you can just use those on the plane so this isn't the exact same range but it is a hydrating range this is Clinique so I've got a miniature um, face soap I've got a daytime moisturizer and a nighttime moisturizer which is fantastic because this little one I'm actually going to pack in my hand luggage so I can pack the full size items in my suitcase and pack the the small travel size ones in my handbag so that I have them for the whole trip Another important tip I would highly recommend is making sure that you have some uh, face wipes. I think these are great while you're traveling because you're often tired or you don't have much time in your hands to make sure that your skin is clean. And I also like using these face wipes on my face while flying. So rather than packing those in my suitcase, I'm going to pack those in my handbag. Next I have this little Ted Baker bag which is completely transparent which is great and I've popped all my pills in there. I'm on quite a few meds, um, I'm on epileptic medication and a number of other ones so I've popped those all in there. Those are extremely important for me to have on hand as you will know if you are also on any crucial medication. Then I'll also just pop a little Panado um, in here as well because you never know when you're traveling if you might end up with a headache um, I've got a sample size again um, here SPF 50 from Dermalogica and I've got an 8 hour cream also in the sample size um, so guys if you take anything from this perhaps just take um, the benefits of using any kind of miniatures so if you get a sample somewhere along the line because you've bought something keep it put it in a box put it away you might not use it immediately but I promise I've gone through tons of these little sample sizes whenever I've bought um, the full size then another tip that you might like um, depending on which kind of mask you like um, I have got these two Sephora masks. I've got a pearl sleeping mask and an eye mask and I really like using these when I'm traveling because then you can make sure that your skin stays refreshed, hydrated and that you get off the plane looking like a human being and not like a wild animal. So I have got these two masks that I'm just going to pop in there as well because I know I will be climbing into this little bag because I need my medication so then once I've taken my medication and I'm ready to sleep I can just pop on a mask together with my eye mask so what I might do is I might put the Sephora eye masks um, or eye patches underneath this and then put this over and do not disturb me <laughs> so I'm going to pop those in my handbag as well along with a little pack of tissues because you don't want to have the sniffles while you're on the plane. So that I'm going to pop to one side. Um, I left out my sunglasses because I thought I might actually pop a pair in my handbag. So, if you are not an avid traveler, you may not know that you are more than welcome to take a handbag, 
as well as a hand luggage bag on the plane. The hand luggage bag does have a size limit, so you couldn't take a full size luggage bag like this blue one that I've been using, but you can take a reasonably sized hand luggage bag. Then in there you're going to need your passports, so I like to keep my two in here. I've got, I travel with two because I've got visas for one that are still applicable for the other one, so I need to carry both. And then I've also got my documents in here for yellow fever injections and whatnot. So those all go in there and those are quite accessible whenever I need them. So I'm going to throw that in here because I have a nice little um, pouch over here. So I'm going to slide that in there so that I can grab it whenever I need it. Then for purposes of beach holidays you always need a good book so rather than carrying around a huge book or two I'm going to be taking my Kindle so that I put in this little tropical bag that I got from Topshop it's I think it's actually supposed to be a makeup bag but I don't understand because it's so thin but anyway I think it works perfectly as a Kindle bag and then I'll also pop my tablets in there as well this is just a Samsung tablet I'm actually not sure which kind of tablet it is but it does the job so in it goes and in it goes again. Then I'm going to be putting in my laptop because I will still need to work a little bit while I am away. So I'm going to pop that in. And then I'm going to pop my hat in last because I didn't want this getting squished in my luggage. And we are ready for our holiday. Now the only thing left to worry about is to make sure that I get to the airport on time and catch my flight to Dubrovnik. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you found some helpful hints and tips on how to pack your luggage. And I would love it if you left a comment down below with your ultimate dream destination or the destination that you are traveling to next. Whether you've booked it or whether you're going to be booking it sometime in the future. Leave it in the comment section below for me to read because I absolutely love finding out where people are wanting to go and wanting to explore and what's on their bucket list. So please give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. That would help me a lot. And the next video that you see will be a travel vlog from Croatia. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Thank you again for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye guys.